Well, here, this is going to be a ton of fun. Ravens and Bucks. Here we go from Tampa. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. Well, the Bucks get ready to go on offense for the first time, and it's Baker Mayfield leading him out in his second season as a Buccaneer and his seventh overall. And he had a most impressive bounce back season last year, nearly leading his team to the NFC Championship game. That's not something you see every day, and he was rewarded for it as Tampa Bay decided to make him definitely their quarterback for the future. Now for him, he wants to prove it's not a one-year thing, and in fact, he is the long-term answer for this franchise. Mayfield off the play fake. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Trenton Simpson, well, he just flew in there to drop him. How about the defense there trying to set the tone on the very first play of the game? Yeah, there's a little bit of a glow here tonight because they brought the heat right out of the gate. What a good job establishing a tone for this one. So an early wake-up call there leads to a quick second and long. A first carry for Rashad White. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. Apparently this defense has come to play. A sack and a run stuff behind the line on the first two plays. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Mayfield to throw it. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. There's another example what defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Yeah, that's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. So here's the first drive for the Ravens. And at the helm is the 2023 NFL Most Valuable Player. Second such time he's won the award, Lamar Jackson. And he's coming off the season where he showed everyone that he's worth every single penny he was given. He now has two MVP trophies on his resume and was on the verge of adding a Lamar Hunt trophy to go with it. Unfortunately, things didn't work out in his favor, but make no mistake about it. He's truly one of the most electrifying players in the NFL. As long as he's the man under center, they'll always be in championship conversation. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry, and he is going to lose yardage here. Getting to him for the loss there, that's Kalijah Kansi. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So a five-yard run the other way in the wrong direction, and that leads us to second and 15. In motion left, Bateman. They go play action now. Jackson rolling to his left. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. This guy's proven himself to be one of the best in the NFL. He brings an added dimension to their offense with his ability to read defenses and know when he's able to pull it down and take off and go. A first down carry for Henry. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes there's a little tread left on the tires. And now Jackson will look to throw it. A short throw caught by Andrews. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. 
He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn upfield and gain any yardage. In motion, Aguilar. A quick pass out to Aguilar. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Zero hesitation that time. That was get ball, throw ball. Yeah, it turned into a smoke route. If you see the coverage off the receiver, doesn't matter whether you call it a run or not. Just take the ball, get it out to him. Heavy set out there on third and one. And he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. Tucker's kick is good, and the Ravens strike first at three zip. A lot of energy in this building tonight, but the opening drive produces three, maybe quiets them just a bit, at least momentarily. Just a little, right? That's all you're asking for, right? Things just getting started. You know they haven't taken the momentum totally here, but at the same time, they like what they've done here in the early going. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. And that good strong run could serve a little bit as a metaphor because White is someone who took a sizable leap from year one to year two. Essentially doubled his yardage output with over 1,500 yards from scrimmage, and that success appears to have carried over to this season. Throwing, Mayfield. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging a little tapestry if you will oh I like it in motion right is Evans Mayfield here's White. they set up the screen nothing on the screen that time now it's third down as a defense you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you they're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Here's third and three. To throw Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. And give him five yards there, and it's enough for the first. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten.
They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. Slant around, going to be caught by Palmer. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Now Mayfield. And that incompletion breaks a string of five straight connections. And it's second down. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Now a second and ten. They'll try the right side here with White. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Palmer going in motion right. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. And his kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all, to me, that's a good drive. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Play action. It's Jackson. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why don't I just handle this one? Got all the yards he needed and then some, and made that snap a huge success. In motion, Aguilar. And they'll fake the jet sweep and run up the middle with Henry. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That was a good forceful run, and it demonstrates why you've got to put your body on a runner when you're trying to tackle him. If you just go in there and just try and get him down with arm tackles, usually doesn't work very well, and we saw in that play, he'll run right through those attempted plays. Completes it to Aguilar. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. 
Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Running from the gun with Henry. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. In motion, Aguilar. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent game and first down. Simply put, you've got to put up more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. Now it's Jackson. And he's got it. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews. 26 yards, and the Ravens have taken the lead. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10-3 now. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it's Mark Andrews who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. The Bucs offense set to begin their next possession. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Adafe Owe buries him for a loss of 11 from his outside linebacker spot. Well, they got the lead, but it's certainly not a big one. And how do you keep control of that lead? Certainly not by that last play there. They gave up a big sack on the first play of this drive. Now it's double the distance to the first down marker. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. And that's incomplete. And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They run straight ahead here with White. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32, and obviously well short of the first down. fourth down so Jake Camarda is out there it's a 43 yard punt a return of five and they will take over first and ten the Ravens offense back out there 
And with still more than a minute to go in the half, time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. Jackson. A little short one there, caught by Likely. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Two yards to go, second down. In motion left, Bateman. They go play action with Jackson. That's complete. It's Zay Flowers with it. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. Through the middle of the field. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Rashad Bateman as the first half is winding down. And the Ravens would extend their lead here just before halftime. Well, if the plan is to come in here and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, it certainly does not hurt if you hit them with a big shot along the way, too. That's got to give them some confidence. And the other thing right now, it quiets this crowd, at least for the time being. Yeah, that is what is called the intended consequence of their actions. Tucker now to add the point after. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it's Rashad Bateman who finished it all off with a touchdown. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Just need a yard here, second and one. Mayfield now. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Final play of the half, Mayfield. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And it's knocked away and incomplete. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. are fairly one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference here at the break. 
but I wouldn't call this one over just yet. I think there could still be some fireworks yet to come. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Seventeen three, the score as we resume action for the second half on EA Sports. And a good return, but he pays the price at the end of it as he's picked up and thrown down. The Raven offense set to start this third quarter. And they have to be pleased with the way that they've moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now. The field goal probably feels like a disappointment. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Second half begins with a run by Henry. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Throwing is Jackson. A solid stiff arm. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 25 yards there on the catch and run. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter... They almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. In motion, Aguilar. And he'll get it here on the touch pass. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. This is second and eight. Inside handoff, Henry. Calling a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Kidd had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Jackson. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Now it's Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. It's a gain of 14 down to the 14. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the gun, Jackson. He completes it to Henry. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start 
of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. And this time, Jackson will throw it. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Derrick Henry, a five-yard touchdown. And the Ravens take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. That time a nine-play drive. And it was finished off on the touchdown reception by Derrick Henry. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. It's caught by Mike Evans. A gain of eight there on the play, and they'll be left with second and a couple. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Mayfield looks to throw. Throw right side, take it in by Godwin. And Godwin going to have a box first down as he'll get this up to the 32. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Mayfield to throw it. Now there's a short one taken in by Otten. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. to get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. They stay on the ground with White. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. 
Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield, he finds his target. It's Evans. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now it's third and three. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Back now in Tampa. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Mayfield now from the 50. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. What a throw right there for the first down. He has taken some real punishment in this game, but still standing in the pocket completing that one. He's a flat-out warrior. There's no question about that. How about him stepping up into the teeth of the rush and delivering there for that big strike and that big pickup? Throwing. Mayfield. A quick pass here to Godwin. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Yeah, you only get a one-yard buffer there from the line of scrimmage, and he got downfield a little too far, and the flag came out. Now a give up the middle. This is White down to the 25. He'll get three of those penalty yards back here, leaving him with a second and 12. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. To throw Mayfield. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Now Mayfield. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. They'll run for it. This is White. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. He needed a yard, he didn't get anything. And this long drive is gonna wind up yielding nothing. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in, and if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high. Because mentally, you're saying, hey, you're in the red zone, we're thinking we're giving up three, we just wanna give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've gotta feel great about what they got done. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. 
Been a very strong performance for them, really on both sides of the football. The turnover on downs, the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap, been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless, take care of the ball on the way out. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. And let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Second and ten. They'll try and choose some clock with Henry. And he'll get about three here up to the 44-yard line. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. And that is incomplete. But their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. And yeah, Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Here's Mayfield. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll look to throw again. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Second and five. Mayfield with it once more. He's got Otten on the out route. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Mayfield now. And this is caught by Evans. 
The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. Again, he'll drop to throw. There's Evans again, complete. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And again, it's Mainfield. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Back to throw again. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Desperation time. Mayfield on fourth down. Now there's a short one taken in by Otten. And unable to break away. They stop him a few yards shy. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. The Ravens offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And as we look back at how we got here, you'll notice a common theme in these highlights. A lot of yardage through the air. The passing game has been sharp right from the outset. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And it was their defensive